An Empire of Ice and Fire by Longclaw 1-6 Chapter 27 Together The fires were everywhere. Deep within Sunspear, the stench of smoke and death hung in the air as the Lannister armies engaged in an orgy of rape and murder. Her loose tunic and headscarf caked in blood and greasy black soot, Tyene Sand scrambled through the winding alleys and corridors of her native city. Her long daggers had slayed many a Lannister. But it wasn't enough. Never enough. All thoughts of victory were gone when the Grey Lion broke through into the princely palace. Now there was only survival on the mind of the last member of the family true to Dawn, not a puppet of the Chimera. This way, my lady. They were dressed in the attire of simple peasants, the lead guard urged. The hope was to melt away into the countryside and fight in an irregular war until Dawn was free. Such thoughts seemed hopeless to to Tyene. She had once thought that the true Dornish patriots, ones that loved her father Oberyn and her aunt Elia, and hated the Lannisters for murdering them, would vanquish Joffrey's army. It didn't come to pass. The Lannister armies, instead of making Dawn howl, they were much less of a chance that they could win now with much of their population enslaved in King's Landing, and with her cousin Tristane as Joffrey's puppet. But it was still a chance. Ty- Lord Tywin Lannister, Hand of the God King and Supreme Commander of the Army of the Holy Chimera, had many names. The Indomitable, dating from when he was the Hand to King Aerys. The Grey Lion, dating from when he had saved King's Landing during the Battle of Blackwater Bay. Now, with the campaign through the southernmost tip of Westeros leaving death, slavery and burnt-out fields and forests in its wake, he drew a new name, the Doom of Dawn. Tyene remembered when he had entered the palace, just as she, her mother and her sisters ready to escape. Standing before them, he looked every inch the Doom. Ilaria Sand, he had said, bowing slightly. It is an honour to accept the surrender of such a lovely woman. His sparkling green eyes remained in Tyene's mind, their colour no less piercing with age. She and her sisters had fought him, fought the mountain. They had felled Tywin's dog, wounding him grievously for what he had done to Elia. But Tywin killed Nymeria and Obara, capturing her mother. Tyene had barely escaped the palace alive. They reached a small gate an individual-sized carving in the walls used for patrols. There are men waiting several miles away, just beyond the mountain cliff face. A knife cut off the guard's sentence, slicing through his neck, causing bright crimson liquid to splatter over Tyene's clothes. The other guard turned, but another blade was sliced his head clean off. Going somewhere, my lady? Sobron of the black water, a ghost of a smirk on his face. His leather fighting tunic and loose chain mail were just as dirty and bloodstained as Tyene's. Sword bloody. He had been fighting hard as well. Not before I send you to hell, she snarled, charging at him. Braun was forced back, sword shifting quickly to block the dual parries and slashes. He jerked forward, putting Tyene off balance, but this lasted but a moment. The agile woman twirling with the grace of a dancer and continuing her frenzied attacks. Block- blocking a downward slash by Braun with crossed blades, Tyene shifted them apart and twisted. Bronze sword clattered to the ground, leaving him bereft of weapons. What Tyene didn't count on was the hero of Blackwater Bay finding this perfectly fine. Out of nowhere came a front kick, felling the sand snake, wind knocked out of her. By the time she caught her breath and reached for her daggers, sharp steel poked at her windpipe. Blade at her neck, Bron knew he could end this girl's life with just the flick of his wrist. But behind the anger, the hate, there was only fear. A scared girl that had lost her family. Something eerily familiar to Bronn. And so time stood still. No move to end her life. No move to spare it. Just a hanging status quo. Tension in the air, so thick a knife could slice through it. Commotion in the alley behind broke the reverie. He quickly made a decision. Go. Tyene blinked. What? For fuck's sake. Bron hissed in frustration. Unless you want Tywin Lannister putting your head on a pike next to your sister's, go. Scrambling to her feet, Tyene was about to disappear into the woods when she turned. Why? Her curiosity got the better of her. Breathing deep, Bron shrugged. Got a weakness for Dornish girls, I guess. Now get. 
Her moment's amusement before she ran off into the brush made him chuckle. Now there's a lady for me. Just then a squad of soldiers burst out of the city. House Tarly by their sigils. Any more, my lord? One asked Bronn, gesturing to the corpses. Bronn gazed at the woods one last time. No, just two fuckers trying to flee. Keep five men at the gate. Rest of you with me. Back into the chaos. <laughs> Much colder than I remember. Tyrion looked out at the expansive snowfall pockmarked with circles and ovals of winter grass. A beautiful sheet of white marred by hardy life. The Lannister knew his father and sister would see it as an apt metaphor for the North. Beautiful desolation, made ugly by the people that lived in it. I hate to sound like a droll pun master, but dare I say that winter is coming. Catelyn Stark rolled her eyes. Don't you have someone else to annoy? Missande, perhaps? The wave of her hand cast the attention to the Na'athi Na Na translator, trying to get Tyrion out of her hair. She knew he had nothing to do with Bran's near death, but he was still the most irritating. He cast her eyes at the translator, whose sullen frown remained. I wouldn't bother a lovely woman pining for her lover. I'm not my sister, Lady Stark. A battalion of Unsullied marched with them as the Queen's personal bodyguard, but Grey Worm wasn't among them. He stayed with the bulk of them at Dragonstone to help Varys, Jorah and Sir Barristan coordinate the main army. Masande couldn't have been the same since. A man with no cock can enchant a woman so? Tyrion resolved to pick the reserved warrior's brain for some secrets to try out on Shay later. One of the Dothraki then? God save her from the imp. Swigging from his canteen, he grimaced out the sour ale but was grateful for the warmth. The Dothraki! They'd have me chained and dancing for their amusement within five minutes. It was ironic, finding himself in the same inner circle as the woman that had nearly had him thrown out of the moon gate at the Eyrie. With Varys and Dragonstone, who else to receive the honour of my superb wit? Aren't to most people who compliment your superb wit people you pay for their company? Tyrion mimed an arrow to his heart. Oh, thou hath wounded me! He drained the canteen, but decided not to refill it. He wanted to be sharp once the convoy reached Winterfell, and the man that had won over his queen's heart. Ahead rode three hundred Dothraki, led by Daenerys' bloodriders, shivering under their thick pelts. Behind him and the Unsullied marched nearly a thousand freedmen auxiliaries. The possible alliance with the North would be sealed with the gift of needed troops. The possible alliance... Given what the Mad King did to the Starks, the northern houses will not take kindly to our queen. Grudges among the north ran deep. They didn't support Renly's claim, instead proclaiming your son King of the North. That will cause headaches for us to deal with. More on the north than on Daenerys. With her love of Jon Snow, Jaehaerys Targaryen, she had to be far more agreeable than any Glovers, Manderleys or Carstarks. Closing her eyes, the topic unnerved her more than his previous irritation. It hit too close to home, to her dishonour. Perhaps I or my children will help defuse the situation. Queen Daenerys is not the Mad King, and a personal touch could go a long way. A gust of wind slammed into them from the north. The Essossi shivered, but Catelyn took it in stride. Her marrying a northerner would help. Considering a marriage to Don Jon Snow, are we? Premature it would... Oh, fuck it, they're already married. If we get to Winterfell, I wouldn't be surprised. The Queen had a knack for getting what she wanted. She wanted nothing more than Jon Snow. If he were to get a title, that would actually help considerably. King in the North, perhaps. My son Rob is King in the North. Scuffling from two of the Dothraki distracted Tyrion for the moment. One probably bumped into another and escalated into a fight to the death. Which their clan elder was trying to stop. Oh, the simpler people on the plains and hills. I mean no disrespect, Lady Stark. But the Northern Lords proclaim a king in the North by acclamation. After the Red Wedding, do you think he could ever resume his title? Or that he would want it? From the way she looked away, Tyrion knew he had gotten the point across. Staring at the white sheet that had blanketed the Northern Plains, Catelyn felt the harsh cold. I still remember the day Ned brought him to Winterfell from the South. No mother and saying he had strayed and that this baby boy was his bastard. I loved Ned, 
and it killed me to think he had betrayed me. The memories tumbled through her head. When I was pregnant with Sansa, John fell sick. I remember praying to the old gods and the need to take him, to let him die, and he grew worse, and I realised what I... Well, the evil I had done, all because of Ned's mistake. So I prayed again to save him, promising that I would raise him as my own. The co gods kept their promise, but I didn't. All that had happened to my family since was because I couldn't give mercy to a motherless boy. Tyrion was silent, chafing in his seat. What could he say to that? What could anyone say to that? Lady Stark laughed humorlessly. And now, not only is John leading the North, he is really the true-born heir to the Seven Kingdoms. Ned was true to me the whole time. The tear fell from her eye. All that happened was all for nothing. Cracking the reins, she galloped ahead with the, of the Lannister, wishing to be alone. Lord Tyrion! The imp turned quickly, finding Miss Sandy having roused from her lonely contemplation. You have met this Jon Snow, correct? She had heard the Lady Daenerys talking about him countless times, to both her and the children, but wanted to know what he was like in his homeland, or more about the real person that held her lady's heart. Making him think a bit, Tyrion searched through his mind for the few moments he had spent with Jon Snow. If I had known he was Rhaegar's son, I would have glued my cheek to his hip. He was just like Ned Stark in a way, brooding and withdrawn, but with a noble heart. I could tell he wanted to do the right thing. His words seemed to lighten a bit of her melancholy. In my life, every highball that I met only cared about their power or class. The Lady Daenerys was an exception. If she wishes me to serve Lord Snow as well, I will do so. But I am glad he will likely make me want to serve him. Tyrion nodded. All of us could stand to be a bit more like them. He pulled the cloak tighter over him. Beastly cold. Only a week before, Danny had imagined Dragonstone to be immensely cold. Now, teeth chattering even with the warmth of the fire within the hearth and the woolen dress, she couldn't manage to get any warmth into her body. All that kept her from making Valerion douse her with dragon fire was the black cloak draped all around her form. A contented smile crossed her face, eyes fluttering as she inhaled the deep scent she had long missed. John. Noticing her woefully underdressed for a northern winter, he had draped his night watch cloak around Danny's body. So loving, so caring. It was just like him to do so, and she hadn't taken it off since. Danny absentmindedly stroked Ghost's soft white fur. The reflections of the momentous day still weighed upon her. To say that the reception she had got after her passionate kiss with John, quite anticlimactic after storming Winterfell atop Valyrian, was tense would be putting it mildly. She had known all these people only from afar during her last stay here, none of them ever truly meeting her. Ghost had been the most enthusiastic practically leaping on the woman he had known so long ago when just a pup and licking her face. He hadn't left her side since, likely guarding his master's most important asset. Danny thought with a happy sigh. Hooray, girl. It had been an unexpected delight to see her child alive, and having taken John as his rider. The green dragon lost no love for his mother, though was more keen to fly off without his, with his brothers after the battle. Would you like some tea, your grace? Looking up, Danny saw Marjorie Tyrell smiling, two steaming cups in her hands. The servants brought us up a pot. I think it would warm you up. Danny smiled. Thank you, Lady Marjorie. The warm liquid spread heat as it slid down her throat. The Tyrell Rose had welcomed her to the most warmly, essentially taking charge of the household while, when John excused himself off to handle prisoners and the elimination of all Bolton debtors from the castle with his brother and sister. Sir Davos and Lady Brienne had been cordial, while the wildling, Tormund Giant's Bane, if Danny remembered his name, made her laugh with his inappropriate jokes about John working off his battle energy with her. Little Rickon was a delight, having taken to Danny almost immediately, despite all he had been through. All that bothered the Dragon Queen was Sansa and Rob, though the hesitancy was only natural. Where is my brother? Danny asked. That Viserys was here, intrigued her. 
She never thought he could manage to marshal a bum fight in a brothel, let alone wrangle an actual army by himself. Marjorie's eyes narrowed. I wouldn't know. Nor would I want to know where that slug is. John or Rob would. At that moment, the three Starks walked in, conversing about someone named Sam arriving with an important package left in the Lord's chambers. It ended when they saw Danny. Lord John, Danny said. Lord Rob, Lady Sansa. Sandra immediately excused herself, not scowling, but closed off. Rob gave her a small smile, while John, as handsome as ever, merely looked at the floor sheepishly. Marjorie got the hint that Danny radiated. Rob, let's find our chamber. The word choice was not lost on any of them, but a story for another day. Soon it was just them left. Daenerys. John reached out his hand. Let me escort you to the Lord's chamber. His gravelly voice sent shivers down her body. Danny smiled and gladly took it. It was surreal as John led her through the halls of the Northern Castle. Halls she remembered well. Devoid of the joy that they had once held under the Starks. The Starks have it again. Darkness had fallen outside, only torches keeping the black of the night at bay. She looked back at John, drinking in the sight. He had grown, muscles firm and face pocked with the scars of a hard life. The same scars as her, though rather external than internal. Oh, my love. What have we gone through while apart? Danny had every intention of sharing all what they had been through, but not tonight. John couldn't look at Danny. To do so would have left him speechless by her beauty. He was a warrior, not the same 16 year old tongue tied in front of the most gorgeous woman on earth. The hand he kept glued to the small of her back sent electric tingles along his skin. Gulping, he found his father's former chamber, the room fit for a queen. Here we are, Daenerys. Biting her lip, Danny waited by the door to the Lord of Winterfell's chambers. Why is he hesitating? She thought, wishing to act regally until they were alone in their room. But gods, just being close to Jon was stoking her to the point of combustion. Her dragon wolf would be the death of her, but then his hand left its perch on the small of her back. Danny immediately felt an unnatural chill where it had been. Good night, your grace. Every part of him wanted to sweep Danny into his arms after the passionate kiss they shared, and reacquaint themselves. But propriety stopped him. John turned and began along the corridor. She was no longer a young girl, but a queen, the rightful heir of the Seven Kingdoms and a Targaryen. With his hope to unite the Northern Lords to deal with the Army of the Dead, what message would it send if he slept with a Targaryen immediately upon her arrival? What message would it send if she slept with a mere bastard? Sadness swept over Danny, in overwhelming her, joining with her loneliness. He had just left her alone, withdrawing into his brooding self, just like when they first kissed in Pentos. No. I didn't journey on dragon back to the north to have John withdraw into his insecurity. A weak girl allowed herself to be lonely. The dragon queen took what she wanted. Stopping in his tracks, John realised he was still thinking of himself a bastard. A damn bastard with no birthright. But he had every birthright. Jaehaerys, Targaryen. Targaryen and Stark. He loved Daenerys and did deserve her. She did deserve him. And wanted him. Danny, he said lovingly, turning only for her to leap into his arms. John! Danny kissed him, kissed him with all the pent up fervour of years of desire. She melded into him, not caring one bit of propriety. No one could disturb the happy reunion now. He lost himself in her, feeling the hole in his heart disappear. He had his dragon back, the beautiful enchantress that haunted his dreams. An unnatural giggle left Danny's lips as John hefted her into his arms, carrying her horizontally. She wrapped her arms around his neck, enjoying the closeness. It had all returned. The same feelings and affection from before. Time had separated them, but hadn't dampened what they felt for each other. Blood of my blood. This man was destined to be hers. Watching him nudge the door open with her leg, Danny lavished John's strong jaw with little kisses. Now they weren't queen and commander, but two reunited lovers dis reconnecting. 
As the wooden door closed shut with a thud behind him, a sound hit Danny's ears that she hadn't heard for nearly four years. Surprised, she turned to John. Her love shrugged, smiling sheepishly. He sat her down just as three dragon hatchlings dove from above the rafters, screeching up a storm. They flocked around John in a joyous frenzy. Hello, girls, he said, chuckling awkwardly. Yes, Daddy's back, safe and sound. The dragons chirped and nuzzled him with their snouts, like Balerion, Rhaegal and Edoron used to. Reassuring his daughters that he had returned, John looked at his lost love gaze upon the sight in pleased wonder. You reacted better than Sansa did when she first met them. With the blood of the dragon, she wouldn't be as shocked. Of course. <clears throat> she cleared her throat, the emotions threatening to overwhelm her. I just wasn't expect expecting more. I thought my dragons were all the only ones. I was surprised myself, believe me. Noticing Danny for the first time, each dragon stared intently at her. Suddenly, they all leapt from John. Circling the silver-haired queen, they excitedly landed and nuzzled to her as well. Danny laughed merrily at the attention. Allow me to introduce you. This is Sansenya, after my sister. Moving his finger to the, the other dragons, his smile suddenly fell. John hesitated, nervousness seizing him. This is Leonaris, after my mother. And Rayella, after my grandmother. The last words hug in the air. Silence between them other than the chirping dragons. Biting her lip, Danny met John's gaze. So, you know. You know the truth. Realising that Danny knew as well, John let out a sigh. I... I do. It did not need to be articulated what they both meant. My father, Ned Stark, told me by way of a letter he left with my uncle at the wall. Same as with the dragon eggs. A present from my father. My real father. To my mother. A tear left his eye. Memories of their loving smiles and warm embraces from when he had died. He shifted back to Danny, who was wearing an unreadable expression. Danny, does this bother you? She shook her head, joy spreading across her face. Soft yet firm hands grasped his. Blood of my blood. Danny had never truly believed in gods or fate, but seeing the one she loved so much turn out to be someone so close, so intertwined in their destinies, it proved to her there was something higher in the world. Jaehaerys Targaryen, my family, one who does love and care for me. Tears ran down her face. We are meant to be together, John. Danny could notice a sadness in his eyes. Are you bothered by it? Her heart clenched at the thought he might. John sighed. It was hard at first, Danny. A flash of pain and heartbreak crossed her violet eyes. No, not like that. John cursed himself internally, hating himself for starting that way. Raising her hand, he kissed it lovingly, feeling her relax. I loved my father more than anything. It killed me not to be his son. Then I was... He paused, not wanting to tell Danny of his death like this. I saw him and my parents in a vision. They told me it was all right, that we were destined to be together. Now it was his turn to softly cry. It should have felt weak, but at this, for the first time in his life, he felt truly safe with someone, to let go and be loved. I love you, Danny. You are my family. Warmth and tenderness filled Danny at that moment. The dragon queen falling deeper in love with her beloved northerner. Oh, John, my family. Stroking her thumb across the rough skin of his hand, Danny moved to embrace him. I never really had a family, John. My mother died giving birth to me. My brother was cruel with bitterness. He told me upon my learning about Drogo that he would sell me as a whore to the entire Dothraki horde for his throne. Then he'd take me for himself to make a pure heir. Danny felt John tense. He didn't have to speak for her to know that he was planning to kill Viserys at this point. My love. She pressed her lips to his, calming him. A tender look crossed her face, softly reaching up to cup his cheek. His close beard prickled her skin. I know you would never do that to me. We are meant to be together. This only proves it. John pulled her back into him. You will never 
know that pain again. I swear it. You'll always have my love. I'm your family, as are Rob, Sansa and Rickon. He hoped the words, mushy as they sounded to him, were calming for her. What did he know of romance and feminine wants? His time with Danny was short, and Ygret was not one for that. A loud roar caught their attention. The three dragons had begun screeching in response, taking flight and diving out of the window. Looking for their brothers. Smiling wide, the dragon queen crossed the small distance between their heads and crashed their lips together. The best things that happened to us. Danny said between deep kisses, me coming to you, ending up in your room. Our first night together. John mumbled happily, against her lips, remembering those same words. It, it is now the first of many. They start undressing themselves here, so I'm just going to scop that a little bit, but then uh, she sees his scars, so here we go. By the time John realised what had happened, a strangled gasp left Danny's mouth. Shit. Eyes wide and centred on his scars. The scars of that fateful night. Her hand flew to cover her mouth. He could see the tears and cloud the lovely violet orbs. I didn't intend for you to find out this way. He offered sadly. He had been planning to ease her into it. But the Dragon Queen was irresistible. It wasn't just a dream. She muttered, gasping again. You really did die. There weren't many weaknesses for Daenerys Targaryen. The scared, meek girl hardened and honed by experience. John was one of them, however, and the mother of dragons melted aside as the truth about her love was unearthed. Danny allowed John to pull her into an embrace, clutching him desperately and burying her face in his warm chest. I did lose you that night. She felt it. John wasn't surprised. As the battle showed, their connection was strong. Danny. He rubbed circles in her back, trying to calm her. I'm here. Listen to my heartbeat. I'm alive. Danny could hear it. Feel the thudding against her cheek. It soothed her sobs. She clutched him even tighter. I could never have gotten to have you again. But I did. The skin under her eyes streaked with tears. Danny pulled back. A trembling finger moved to trace the most prominent scar, right over his heart, courtesy of Alistair Thorne. <laughs> How? Who did the Targaryen Queen have to feed to Balerion for nearly taking her dragon wolf from her? Guiding her to sit on the bed, John kept her close to him. I brought the wildlings south of the wall, and some of the men didn't agree. Then he watched, looked up at him, listening intently. The Night's Watch, we fought the wildlings for millennia. And I let them south. It caused a lot of disagreement and the former Lord Commander stabbed me through the heart. Rob executed him. But how did you live? His heartbeat calmed her, soothing her sadness. The Red Witch brought me back to life with fire. And thus, the dragons were born. John kissed the top of her head. Danny gave him an astonished look, one filled with awe and love. The unburnt. No words were ever needed between them at this moment. At this point, the only thing that could reassure them that they, that each was there to stay, together forever. While the previous moments were rushed and desperate, the kiss now shared was slow and needy, one of reassurance as well as lust. Danny's hand weaved through John's dark hair, grabbing onto the thick strands. The warmth radiating off their skin banished the northern chill. She ached to be close to him in every way. You kept the pendant? Aye, I did. He smiled, kissing her. I did it to keep you close to me. Oh, John. God, she loved him, holding him close. My dragon wolf. If you are to be a proper Targaryen king... There will be something you need to learn. I already know how to ride a dragon, my queen. Furrowing her brows, it took a moment for Danny to understand his innuendo. She flushed, smacking him on the chest. Stop it! <laughs> Danny couldn't help but laugh. It was just delightful and intimate and loving between them. 
You're going to have to need to learn Valyrian. Will you be my tutor? Or someone else? John asked innocently. She peered up at him, curious. I doubt he would find it honourable for me to try and distract with someone else. His voice was flat, but his eyes danced with amusement. She smacked his chest again. Shut up! They both smiled, Danny leaning up to begin a slow kiss. One of their shared love, only for it to break off upon his wide yawn. Tired, my dragon wolf. Aye, he lazily drawled. Battle does that to a person, my dragon. Snuggling into his chest, a feeling so long missed, Danny kissed his scar. I love you, John, no matter where I was. The great grass sea, Astapor, Marine, I never stopped. Drowsiness overcoming him, John held her tightly. I love you too, Danny. North of the wall, on those dark nights, you were the one thing that kept me alive. That kept me going. The last thing he felt before the darkness of sleep coaxed him into, coaxed him into it was the feel of Daenerys Targaryen's smile against his chest. Eyes sliding open, Danny pierced into the darkness of the Lord's bedroom. The fire had died some time in the night and left the room quite cold. It was a foreign feeling to her, having lived all her life in warm climates. However, the thick blankets and something warm nestled beside her kept the chill at bay. Through the low moonlight, she stared at the sleeping form of her beloved. Daenerys softly cupping his cheek, John's soft breathing causing her heart to clench. He was out cold, the excursions of their battle and their love draining her, even his youthful stamina. In sleep, the true heir to the Seven Kingdoms looked so peaceful, so relaxed and unburdened. Leaning up, Danny kissed his jaw. My beloved. No victory, no crown. Could compare to the feeling of being with Jon Snow. Once they were both reunited with the twins, her family would be complete. Slowly, carefully, Daenerys inched her way out of the bed. John's strong arm wrapped around her made it difficult. She managed, however, instantly feeling both the cold and the loneliness. Not to mention, well, anyway. She grinned slightly. Slipping her dress and John's warm cloak over her nude form, Danny watched as John turned on his side, hugging the pillow. Mmm, Daddy, he mumbled in his sleep. Oh, my love. Even in his sleep, he couldn't stop thinking about her. Stepping out of the door, Danny took one more look at her sleeping dragon wolf. She hated to leave him even for a moment, but there was something she needed to do. Curled up by the door, Ghost's very white head quickly perked up when Danny entered the hallway. Better than any guard, a pony-sized dire wolf. The silver-haired Targaryen ruffled his head. Ghost's ears tilted back in relaxed delight. Stay here, boy. Protect him for me. The direwolf flicked her hand. I'll take that as a yes. Grabbing a torch mounted on the wall, Daenerys proceeded down the hallway. Nearly five minutes later, Danny cursed in Valyrian under her breath. The corridors of Winterfell were tight and wilding, winding, unlike the spacious, airy passageways of the Great Pyramid of Marine. Is that the same lantern that I passed twice? Further curses tumbled out as she headed for a new corner, frustrated at the prospect of twisting and turning all the night through the twin gasps echoed out. Danny turned the corner to nearly run into someone. Stepping back several paces, her fear dampened at the sight of red hair. Lady Sansa! Breathing deeply, Sansa nevertheless recovered her bearings and curtsied, noble training kicking in. Your Grace! She couldn't help but notice Jon's cloak around the Dragon Queen and what it signified. Good. He deserves to be happy. A soft hand guided Sansa upright once more. No need for formalities. You are John's sister. You may call me Daenerys. This was the woman who would be her sister when she and John were eventually wed. The thought of sending joy through her system. The Dragon Queen was nothing what Sansa had imagined the Targaryens to be. Of course, the conquering dragon rider showed up on the battlefield, but the vicious monster, like Viserys, was nowhere to be seen. Instead, the Targaryen before her was caring and loving. Some, someone she could tell was worthy of her beloved brother. It would take a while for her to open up, 
or to fully trust Danny as John did, but Sansa resolved she could try. All right, Daenerys, please, call me Sansa in that case. She smiled softly. Danny returned the smile, looking back at the corridor. She let out a defeated sigh. I seem to have gotten lost. Imagining the great Daenerys Targaryen befuddled by simple corridors to cause Sansa to giggle. Believe me, if I didn't grow up in here, I would be hopelessly lost too, as well. Where were you heading? To find my brother, Danny scabbled. I need to see him. The scabble was returned by Sansa, any friendliness draining from her eyes. It was so familiar to Danny. She had seen it in the mirror many times. Haunted. Bitter. He's locked up in the kennels with Ramsay. I'll take you. Side by side, the two women stalked through the corridors. Not a sound echoed but the flicker of torches and the soft patter of their boots. Your brother. Was he always such an arsehole? Sansa's blunt question caused Danny to snort. Not always. He was very kind in youth. But years of poverty and blind ambition made him bitter. Cruel, even. Did he? Sansa didn't know why she was probing. Perhaps she wanted someone who understood her pain. John and Rob loved her and would kill Ramsay if she asked, but they didn't understand. Did he hurt you? Danny closed her eyes, breathing deeply. He used to, if I disobeyed or disturbed him. He would also say how he would force me to bear his pure children. The memory hurt, but Danny steeled herself. She wasn't that scared of girl anymore. So did Ramsay. Danny swiveled her head, shocked. So that's what it was. The silver-haired queen had known it was so familiar. He enjoyed it. I'm sorry, Sansa. The redhead shrugged. He's going to die tonight, so it doesn't matter. What really hurts is my family. John, Rob and Rickon are alive. But Arya isn't. Bran isn't. A tear fell from her cheek. Bran, oh gods, Danny had forgotten about him. Your brother is alive. Sansa's eyes lit up. Your mother, she arrived in Marine. Bran was with her. A desperate hand clutched her arm. Bran is alive? And coming here? No. Some of the excitement fell, but the relief was still there. But he's alive, and well in Estos. It slipped my mind, but I'll tell John after. They entered the snowy courtyard, Danny tightening John's cloak around her. As they were about ten feet from the kennels, Sansa tugged on Danny's arm, holding her back. Is there something else you haven't told my brother, Daenerys? She crossed her arms, scowling. Biting her lip, Danny could tell that the northern woman could see straight through her. They were alike, strong women born through hardship. It bequeathed to them a keen knowledge and understanding of the other. She couldn't hide this from Sansa. Given that they were basically family, Danny didn't want to. I'm awaiting. Her eyes were bitter. John, Danny sighed. John has children. Blue eyes widened, Sansa's jaw dropping. She obviously hadn't expected that. After I left Winterfell, I found out. I was with child. I bore him twins. Sansa didn't know what to say. She would thought the Dragon Queen would have had some political betrothal or lover back in Essos. Not that John would be a father. Are you sure they're his? Sansa couldn't believe that the Targaryen princess, John's lover, had been under their noses the entire time. A wide, dreamy smile formed on Danny's face. They look so much like him. The smile fell when she noticed Sansa was still scowling. With all that happened, it just didn't seem like the right time to burden him. Danny felt terrible, but with John's nature, she needed to tell him when he couldn't panic or hate himself. Opening her mouth to scold the Dragon Queen, Sansa shut up. The more she thought about it, Danny was right. John would brood and hate himself, and he needed his rest and happiness after the battle. I understand. But you need to tell him tomorrow, or I will. Her voice was as firm as Valyrian steel. The frown changed to a soft smile when Danny nodded. I was an aunt all this time. What are their names? Joy feel Danny, remembering their fa- imagining their father playing with them in Dragonstone, which would happen soon. Rhaegar, 
after my brother and his father. And Arya, after his other sister. Sansa chuckled. I get his dragon and Arya gets his daughter. I guess I know where the petting, pecking order stands. The dragons are our children, Sansa. They are as much mine as the twins. By night, by naming Sansenya, John shows how much he loves both his sisters. The two smiled at each other, for a groan from the kennels caught their attention. Shall we? Sansa nodded decisively. Blinking, lids heavy from pain and fatigue, Ramsay lifted his head. It was as it felt as if a bag of stone was holding it down. Trying to wipe away the muck coating his face and arms, well, they wouldn't move. What the fuck? They were bound. He gazed around at the blurry surroundings. Sansa? There she was, standing in front of him, the dragon queen beside her. So, you've brought a guest, dearest wife. You're a disgrace to our house, slut sister. In a locked adjoining cell was Viserys. The cell happened to be the most rancid and shit-filled. It was clear they had been arguing for some time before he woke up. Spitting at her, Viserys did his best to look regal at the shit-lined cell. First you rule over horse barbarians, then slaves, then now you sully the bloodline with the bastard son of the usurper's dog and some stormland whore. It was obvious to Sansa that the Dragon Queen loved her brother, loved him desperately. Rumours of her exploits in Essos and how Daenerys loved her people there, even those enslaved. One in particular came to mind, how she had had the cruelest masters in Marine crucified for doing the same to young slave girls. Sansa waited for the inner dragon to release itself at Viserys, insulting ways. Gods know he deserves it. To her surprise, Danny's lips morphed into a dark smirk. Sansa raised an eyebrow. Why does she? Oh. She smirked as well. You are mistaken, beloved brother. On the third, John is no bastard. What are you talking about? Viserys asked, rage clouded slightly by puzzlement. Ramsay was listening intently. Still smirking, Daenerys looked at Sansa, permitting her to do the honours. The former Lady of Winterfell eagerly took the task. John is a trueborn, the son of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen, the older brother and crowned prince. The sight of the appealing Viserys made her feel oddly content. He is the true king of the Seven Kingdoms. So you see, dearest brother, John is what you could never be. Both the best of blood, Valyrian nobility and the kings of the north, and the best in leadership. The Dragon Queen leaned close to the bars, violet eyes blazing dragon fire. She could tell all he knew it to be true, by how he shook from terror of his birthright ripped away. You are nothing compared to him. You are no Targaryen, no king. Silence reigned for what seems like an hour. Suddenly a giddy laugh pierced the void. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Had Ramsay not been tied to his chair, he would have likely bawled over in pure mirth. You dumb fucking moron! <laughs> he hadn't laughed so hard since torturing Theon Greyjoy. You know, when I was planning on killing you, as soon as I had a baby with Targaryen blood. The train of thought was punctuated with even more laughter. Viserys stared at Ramsay, eyes as wide as saucers at how deeply he had been deceived. I thought no one could stand in front of me to take the Iron Throne. But there was one. <laughs> the Stark bastard. <laughs> Not even a bastard. <laughs> the giggles continued, eyes boring and into the two women. I could die happy knowing that no matter what, my king, he'll never know a day of ruling. Die happy, Ramsay. Daenerys watched as Sansa's satisfied smirk fell, facade returning. She scowled as well, looking at the man who had nearly butchered her beloved. Your house will die. Your name will be forgotten. A mere afterthought in the story of how the Starks and Targaryens reclaimed their realm. But... If you insist. Something dark swelled in those blue eyes. I will oblige you. Reaching for an axe handle, she hit the bars with a resounding clang. Out trotted several large dogs. 
fur black and dark grey. They circled their master. Ramsay chuckled. My hands would never harm me. You didn't feed them in seven days. You said so yourself. They are loyal beasts. Vala Mongules, Ramsay Bolton. Danny watched as the dog sniffed at him with the same righteous judgment that found the vicious masters crucified, ignoring his commands to heal. All men must die, and evil would always pay the price eventually. She was proved right when the dogs lunged forward, starved bites ripping at their master's body. Silently, the two women walked away, a bond forged between them. Her dog in the corner of his cell, Viserys closed his eyes the screams and engorged barks ringing in his ears. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this. Wow, just wow. John truly starting to come into his own. And I love that bonding moment between Sansa and Daenerys, that they see each other as both women who have gone through the seven hells and come out stronger for it. And also Sansa's moment of overprotectiveness of John, when she says, if you don't tell him about the twins, then I will very nice and I like that what Danny said to Viserys at the end there <laughs> don't mess with those ladies you gotta get bitten or burnt or both and it's great as much as it's dark twisted and horrid at the same time it's very satisfying <laughs> well I guess that's why we do this don't we the vicarious thrill of living in these times sorry I'm rambling but then again I've been rambling for over 45 minutes so what do you guys come here to listen to <laughs> have a good day night whatever time zone you're in bye my guys gals and non-binary pals remember to like comment and subscribe check me out on twitter as well and remember to hit that bell to get notified for another uploaded new video bye